Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Today is all about the iPhone SC. And I'm sure by now you've had the chance to unbox your new iPhone and set it up a little bit. And now you're wondering what additional settings to change next. Well, today I'll show you some of my personal favorites, some of the first things that I do on my phone right after setting it up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this video. Now, if you haven't seen my setup video, let's start with the basics and set up your new phone. Now, the great thing, it's super easy if you guys have an old phone that's on iOS 12.4 or above. You don't even need to back up your data and restore it anymore. You can transfer it directly from one phone to the next. Go ahead and start out by hitting the home button to open that up. Just give it a second here. These guys should pick it up. There we go, it will look something like that on your old phone. Go ahead and click continue. Now, as you guys can see, this is going to pop up on the new phone. Go ahead and just position your old phone right over that with the camera. Sorry, that was off screen right there. Anyhow, now it's going to say finish on the new phone. So we can go ahead and put that guy back down. So just let it do its thing, and uh, it says it may take a few minutes to activate your iPhone. That is completely normal. So while we're on the setup process, a good idea is to set up Touch ID. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Again, just like the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6S, the iPhone 7, and the iPhone 8, the Touch ID setup process is exactly the same. Adjust your grip, click continue, and again, we're off once more. And now it says complete your touch ID is ready. Go ahead and click continue and just go ahead and create a passcode. I'll just keep it simple for this video. I'll use uh, all zeros. Go ahead and enter it one more time. And here is the transfer process. It's awesome. No more backing up your old phone to transfer it to your new one. It will transfer the data directly from the old one to the new one in one fell swoop. Go ahead and click continue. It says setting up your Apple ID. That is one thing that will be taken care of with this process. It will also install apps, transfer photos, transfer messages, and all of your important data from your old phone to your new one. So once that screen passes, go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions. Now this is the really cool part too. You can customize what settings you want to uh, transfer from the old phone. We'll go ahead and click continue through a lot of this. Now another great idea is to set up Apple Pay right from the get-go. We'll go ahead and click continue and go ahead and click continue once again. And now we will add our Apple Pay cards directly to our new phone. Click continue once again to start using Apple Pay. Another good idea is to set up Surrey. We'll go ahead and do that real quick. Go ahead and share audio recordings, why not? And uh, don't share iPhone analytics. I don't know why, we'll choose that. And finally, once we have all these little settings taken care of, it is now transferring our data from our old phone to our new phone. As you guys can see, I don't have too much data on the old phone, so it says about two minutes. It can take up to about 30, depending on the amount of data that you have. Anyhow, I'll go ahead and let this complete and be right back. And there we have it. Transfer is complete. It says that on the old phone. Go ahead and click continue. We're done with that guy. And once your new phone, your new iPhone SE, finishes rebooting, all of your previous data from your past phone will be on the new one. So once it's booted back up, go ahead and enter your ID. And as you guys will notice, all of your iCloud settings and all of your apps will have transferred. They're now going to download in the background. So during that setup process, we set up a lot of the fundamentals. We have a lot of our data, our applications, iCloud. We set up Touch ID and Apple Pay. And all of those things are great things to do right off the bat. Now, one thing I personally do right after setting up my phone is I head into the settings app and adjust this one setting. Now it's under display and brightness and it's called auto lock. Now, as you guys know, my screen dimmed there for a second. 
Um, and that's because after 30 seconds, the display will automatically shut itself off. And I just don't like that feature, so I just set this to never. So that's super cool. That's what these phones are all on right here. That's how the display is staying on in the background. Now, one other setting that I change is actually under accessibility. It's under display and text size. And then at the very bottom, auto brightness. I turn that guy off. By default, it's enabled. And uh, basically your display will get brighter or darker depending on the ambient light in the room. I turn that off. But onto the next thing that I do, I start to organize the home screen. There's a bunch of clutter on here. If I go ahead and just hold down for a second uh, on the home screen and click edit home screen, just like that. Now we're in editing mode and we can start to rearrange these apps. Uh, I'll just get some of this stuff off of my home screen that I don't use. Uh, that looks good. I actually FaceTime. I don't ever go into that. Um, I typically just round up all of Apple's stock applications and then just throw them into the utilities folder that's already made right there. And I'll take some of my personal applications from the second page. You can tap them all and move them all over to the first page. Click the home button to uh, finalize your settings and there we go. Now our home screen is set up the way we want it. Uh, next, I'll head into the settings app once again, back out. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go into the control center and customize the controls. Now one thing that I do is I add dark mode and I also like to add screen recording. So now wherever we're at on the phone, if I swipe up, I have the option to enable dark mode or start a screen recording just like that. And once you guys have that home screen organized, it might be worth checking out some of the other wallpapers that come on the iPhone SE. Now, I'll go ahead and link all the iPhone SE wallpapers down below in this video's description. There's awesome variants out there, both light and dark mode. Anyhow, guys, definitely check that out. There's some awesome new stuff there. It's super easy to apply a new wallpaper to. Just pop open the settings app once more, scroll down to wallpaper, choose a new wallpaper, select stills, and then choose a still image that you want. You can just tap on one, select set, set for either just the lock screen, the home screen, or for both. It's that simple, guys. Now, since I transferred data, this might already be set up, but typically what I like to do is go into the messaging app and set up your message profile. So for contacts like Tanner or anyone else with an iPhone, their photo and contact name will automatically be sent to me. And you can also set up your own uh, contact information. Basically, I'll use some B-roll here because it did not come up on this phone. But anyway, you can set up your message profile and it just makes it so much easier than having to manually input that. Anyhow, that's iMessages profiles in a nutshell. Moving on to the next topic, uh, I'll have to use some B-roll for this one again, but this might be a good excuse to get outside for a little bit and uh, check out the camera on the new iPhone SC. Um, it's not great, but it's really not that bad at all. Um, I'd say it's pretty comparable with like the iPhone 8. Uh, photos in natural light look great. It really starts to struggle in low light, but I will say the video is phenomenal. You will not find a better phone that takes 4K video for this price point. It's super incredible. Definitely check out some of the new portrait features and just camera features and just the camera quality on the iPhone SC. It's definitely worth taking note of. One more thing I like to do when I get a new phone, this just might be me, but I like to run a Geekbench test or just a benchmark test just to make sure I didn't get a lemon. Anyhow, to include it in this video, I'll go ahead and run this real fast. And here is the scores, guys. Not too surprising, the A13 chip is phenomenal in the iPhone SE. Really, it's absolutely overkill for the display and the size of this phone, but this by far is the fastest chip in any smartphone still to this day, I believe. And that's just insane to me that it is in a $400 phone. Like a lot of other reviewers have said out there, really, it's it's a game changer. It is a Pixel 3a killer. Any other budget smartphone just does not make sense. And the main selling point here is that this is an iPhone. And uh, with it being an iPhone, uh, this is probably the most important part of this video, guys. 
One thing that I definitely do with every iPhone or with every Apple product that I purchase is I try to protect it as much as I can. Getting Apple Care, getting a screen protector, getting a case, anything for it, because man, these devices are not cheap to replace. Anyhow, that pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think down below of the iPhone SE and if there's any other video suggestions you guys have. We both have the phone and we'd love to do videos on these new products. Um, yeah, this was a fun video to make, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by again. Thank you for the support. I'll catch you guys real soon, but until next time, this is Tony signing out.